I got to show the people at home how ridiculous oh, yeah. this rig is. You guys have got to see what I'm filming on right now. This thing is a freaking unit. Like We're shooting on the A7S III. We've got the Atomos Ninja Ultra monitor with a gigantic small rig. This thing is like battery pack. This thing is a solid 15 pounds. Like <laughs> I'm not going to the gym after this today. This is this is my workout for the day. Filming myself is very difficult, uh, but this thing is sweet. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of behind the scenes of the behind the scenes of yeah. the behind the scenes. <laughs> it's it's BTSception. What is up, y'all? Jake Otrowski here, head of content creation with Still Austin Whiskey. And today we're in the office shooting some new product photos for our new bottle. We got Mike over here already set up in the studio. We're gonna see what it's all about. Let's get into it, you know? Are we ready to party? We are ready to party. Okay. Woo. So today we're gonna shoot the next release of our Distillery Reserve series, which is a ruby red port finished straight rye whiskey. So I'm gonna show you how to set this thing up because we're pretty stoked on how all of our lighting kind of works. We spent a bunch of time like really dialing it in and to get like product consistency online, to make all of our labels, all of our bottle photography look really good. Yeah, so let me show you how it's all set up. Okay. So first thing we're gonna do is check out this camp. We're shooting today with the Sony a7 IV. We've got the Tamron 28 to 75, and we're set right at about 50 millimeters. Then on top here, we've got this flash controller deal. So the nice thing about this is we've got three Godox lights here, one on each side, one behind. And we can control each one of these from this thing so we don't have to mess around with each individual light once we get it all dialed in. Super important when we're doing this type of thing is to tether. So we've got this nice bright orange tether cable which goes all the way back into the laptop here where we have Capture One. And what's nice about that is as soon as we take a photo, it shows up here on the screen so we can check on a nice big monitor exactly what's looking good and what needs to get fixed. Okay, let's talk about the lights. Come over here. So for this setup, what we've got is the Godox DP400. We've got three of those, and if you notice, they're placed kind of strategically, one on each side. And then in front of each one of those, we have these big scrims. And then on the back, trust me, there's one back there too, with another scrim. And if you look at these soft boxes, so these are strip lights, right? So they're long rectangles. And the reason we have those is because when we take the photo, we wanna have a nice line on each side of the bottle that kind of goes from the top all the way down. So I went online and I found this little guy right here, which is a perfect circle that's about the size of our base of the bottle. And what that allows it to do is to let the light go all the way down without getting cut off on a hard surface. Also on these lights, you'll notice that we have the softbox diffusion on the front and then this secondary diffusion with the scrim. The reason we want to do that is to create like a really soft gradient light. So that's why everything is double diffused. And I ordered a double double, but they gave me the double 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 double. So this is the last light we're using and you'll notice this is not mounted. This is just a speed light. This is the Godox V1S. And basically what we're going to do with this thing is I'm just going to hand hold it at the end to get one last clean shot that's going to light up the front of the label really, really well. So we've got each side by itself and one from the back. And I'll show you a little secret. If you notice this label, we don't have a back label. The reason for that is when we shoot it from the back, if we have a back label, it's gonna make a weird like square back there and it's gonna look ugly. You're ugly and what? Square? We'll set it up here. All right, let's talk about camera settings. For shutter speed, I've got it set at 250, which is the native flash sync speed. For aperture, we did some tests earlier and 7.1 was mwah for this lighting. And I've got the ISO all the way down to 100. Obviously it looks like way underexposed when you're looking on here because we're gonna shoot with flash. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go shoot each one of these shots with each flash by itself so that we get the cleanest image possible from each individual exposure. And then once we're all done, then the designers will take all three of those files, four files, put them together, composite something that just has the best of all of them together and it's gonna be dope. All right, so I think we're ready to shoot. Jake, you wanna talk to the camera at all? <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> This is, this is the best. This is, this is usually my job, but Mike is doing it today. Okay, we talked about setting. We talked about our controller. We talked about everything. The only thing left to do is shoot. Since we're compositing, I mentioned earlier how important the tripod is. And the reason it's important is because each one of these exposures 
we're gonna have to layer them on top of each other. Layers! So even the slightest camera movement is gonna create some problems for the designers in post. So I'm gonna do my best to keep everything locked in exactly where it is. I've got my manual focus set which we should check again. But I've got manual focus set, I've got the lights set, we've got positioning, like I talked about. Jake and I did a couple of tests before this and I think we're pretty good, but let's do it live and let's see how this goes. No. We'll do it live, Fuck it. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to touch this thing a little bit. So I'm gonna be super careful not to bump anything as we turn on and off all of these different lights. And we've got it on a manual setting of one over 32 pounds. So let's take a look and see how that goes. All right, let's look over here. So you can see what we've got in here is a really nice clean glow from behind. It's glowing. Accentuating kind of the still Austin embossing back there. Obviously you can tell the front of the label's black. There's no highlights on the sides. This exposure is all about just getting a nice, clean, beautiful glow from behind. So next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn off that A light now and then go to the B light, which is the one here on the left. And let's see how that goes. Noise. Now check this out. What I love about this double diffusion and that line I was talking about earlier, you can see we've got this really nice highlight all the way down the neck. You see in here this really soft gradient, beautiful. And then down here, soft gradient. And if you can kind of imagine what we're gonna do next is after we shoot this side, then we're gonna shoot that side. And then we have our nice, beautiful backlight. And then the last thing that we have to do is just get the front. And that's gonna be that handheld flash that I was just talking about. Let's see how that goes. So that's the last photo. You can see on the right, Got that nice line again, creeping down the side. When you see later when we put it in post, everything comes together very, very nicely. Okay, the only thing left to do is get the front of the label. First, I'm gonna grab my handheld, fire this bad boy up, come back over here, turn off my C light, go to D, turn that on, manual. And the power on this one's set at one over eight. So one eighth versus 132 or 132 on the other ones. And the reason for that is this is a little less powerful than those. Now let's see that. So previous, so we've lost that highlight right in the middle of the gold there. We've got a little bit cleaner of an exposure here on the tax band at the top. So that exposure we'll probably end up using. It's a, got a little bit of shine there, but I think that looks cool. But as you see, because I'm holding the light from the top, so obviously we're gonna get a lot more light up here. So you can see this is a lot brighter and it gets darker as it gets down here. So one of the ways that we figured out how to combat that a little bit is we made this little uh, reflector card here, which I'm gonna need somebody else's hand. Katie, when you get a second, can you come over here, please? And so what we did was we cut out this circle here in the middle, and what we do is we put that in front of the lens and kind of angle it like this so that when I'm shooting down from the top, the light's still gonna get the top of the bottle like I showed before, but then this bottom is gonna reflect it a little bit back up towards the bottom, give it a little bit cleaner more even exposure. So we'll do that a few times until we get something that looks good. And then we'll have our four exposures and we'll be good to go. Okay, Katie, what I need you to do, take this guy like this, try not to bump anything and put it over like that. You're gonna need two hands, yep. There we go. So coming up over top, about 45 degrees. Much cleaner. You can see if you get really close in there because of the embossing, the lights catch in the top of those letters. So we'll go to the one where I shot it straight on. We'll probably end up using that one for the gold and then mixing in some of these other ones down at the bottom. Okay, so just for fun, I'm gonna turn all the lights on at the same time. So we'll get one exposure with everything just to see how the whole thing looks together. We're not gonna use it, but. Whoa, Katie, you look Katie. so <laughs> different. What the heck? Katie has morphed into RJ. So now we've got all the lights back on. So when I hit the button this time, all of them are gonna trigger. We're gonna get some weird reflections and some weird shadows and stuff, which is why we won't do it as one photo in the first place. But I think we're gonna get to see something similar to what it's gonna end up looking like. Booyah. Booyah! So check that out. So we've got both of our beautiful gradients, pretty symmetrical. We've got a nice backlight. We've got a pretty even front label. Um, obviously, we've got this big reflection here where my 
um, handheld speed light was, which is why we're not gonna do this. But between all of those exposures, I think we got money. All right, so we just finished shooting the photos. We got them exported, sent over to our graphic designer, Brian. He's been working on them in Photoshop. So let's see what he's up to and check out the final product. Hey, what's going on? Brian here, graph designer here at Still Austin. And uh, I'm gonna take all the photos they just took, get the best ones, composite them together and make a pretty cool image for our hero shot. All right, so I'm getting into Photoshop. I'm gonna get my four photos, put them, put them all in together. Uh, I'm gonna deal with the, the base one and the juice right now. First I'm gonna do is mask off the label <coughs> and paint in our juice, make it look all pretty. Uh, you know, get the details. We took those great photos, but we have an iPhone photo for the handwriting. So I'm masked that out, going to line it all up. You know, got, got to wiggle it around a little bit. I'm going to turn it to black and white and up the con contrast so I can just mask it out and multiply it over the label. Next, we're going to work with the tax ban. Uh, so I got another photo and I'm, you know, masking that out as well. Going to composite it on top. Um, hit it with that little highlight, then adjust the exposure. Looking pretty good. Last thing we gotta do is bring in these highlights. These side highlights are really good. I'm gonna paint those in, and after that, it's just money. All right, so last thing, might as well just talk about this release. So this Distillery Reserve Series bottle is super cool. Every year we do one that is individualized by artists. And so the last few that we did, um, we did painters and they lay out all of the different labels like on a wall and you know individually paint hand paint every single label so everything's completely unique and different so we did two hand painted ones and then one we did with a graffiti artist it's been one of our like most successful DRS labels that we've done and so this year when we were talking about how to individualize these things we um, talked about working with like a writer and so there is this author named Stacy Swan and we talked to her about the project she thought it was a really cool idea to actually write a original short story for us so she wrote this story called Good Chaos and basically the story is going to be handwritten piece by piece on all the different labels so as you can see on this one it's blank but this is where we're gonna have somebody hand write the pieces of the story and then once this thing comes out, we'll have the entire story online so everyone can read it. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. And every individual bottle will have its own unique label. And it's gonna be super sweet. Cool. Thanks, dudes. They're over here in the cage. They locked them. They locked up our bottles. Man, free our bottles. This is messed up. Check that out. So this is our secret library where we keep some of the extras that we want to save and not sell. So this is some of our rarest stuff from a couple of years ago. This was our graffiti artist, Zuzu, that we worked with here. You can see how each individual label is completely unique.